What if I told you that a single aircraft helped win World War II? Not through stealth or speed, but by becoming an unstoppable flying battleship. Today, we're breaking down the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, the legendary bomber that earned its nickname through blood, bullets, and engineering brilliance. We'll explore the technical secrets behind its four massive engines, 13 machine guns, and the defensive innovations that allowed crews to bring these battered giants home. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how American engineering created a flying fortress so tough that German pilots called it the aircraft that wouldn't die, and why this machine changed aerial warfare forever. To understand the B-17, we need to go back to the 1930s, when military strategists believed that heavily armed bombers could penetrate enemy airspace and destroy strategic targets without fighter escort. People like Billy Mitchell pushed this vision, shaping the B-17's destiny. In 1934, the U.S. Army Air Corps issued a specification for a new multi-engine bomber capable of carrying a 2,000-pound bomb load over 2,000 miles at 200 miles per hour. Boeing's response was revolutionary. While competitors submitted twin-engine designs, Boeing engineer Edward Wells and his team proposed something unprecedented, a four-engine heavy bomber that could operate at altitudes where enemy fighters couldn't reach. On July 28, 1935, Boeing's Model 299 took to the skies for the first time. Seattle Times reporter Richard Williams, watching this bristling aircraft taxi for takeoff, coined the term Flying Fortress, a name that would become legendary. The prototype impressed Army observers by flying from Seattle to Wright Field in Ohio at an average speed of 252 miles per hour, far exceeding specifications. However, disaster struck during military evaluation when the prototype crashed due to pilot error the crew had forgotten to remove the control locks. Despite this setback, the Army recognized the aircraft's potential and ordered 13 pre-production models designated YB-17. This decision would prove crucial as war clouds gathered over Europe. The B-17's evolution from experimental aircraft to production bomber reflected a clear design philosophy. Create a high-altitude precision bombing platform that could defend itself through superior firepower and robust construction. The heart of the Flying Fortress was its power plant, four Wright R1820 Cyclone radial engines, each a masterpiece of engineering. These nine-cylinder air-cooled radials were specifically chosen for their reliability and power output at high altitudes, exactly what the B-17's mission demanded. Each Cyclone engine displaced 1,823 cubic inches and produced 1,200 horsepower at takeoff power settings. But raw power was only part of the equation. The real engineering triumph was the supercharger system. Each engine featured a single-stage, single-speed supercharger that compressed incoming air, allowing the engines to maintain performance at the B-17's operational altitude of 25,000 feet and above. This supercharger technology was crucial because air density at 25,000 feet is only about one-third of what it is at sea level. Without forced induction, the engines would have been starved for air and incapable of producing sufficient power. The supercharger allowed the cyclones to breathe properly in the thin air where the B-17 did its deadly work. The result was impressive performance figures. The B-17G the most produced variant, could achieve a maximum speed of 287 miles per hour at 25,000 feet, with a cruising speed of 182 miles per hour. The aircraft could climb to its service ceiling of 35,600 feet, though normal operational altitude was typically between 20,000 and 28,000 feet, high enough to avoid most anti-aircraft fire, but low enough for accurate bombing. Range capabilities were equally impressive. With a full bomb load of 6,000 pounds, the B-17 could fly 2,000 miles, enough to reach targets deep in Germany from bases in England. On ferry flights without bombs, range extended to 3,750 miles. 
This performance was enabled by a fuel system carrying 2,700 gallons of aviation gasoline in multiple wing tanks. The fuel system incorporated a crucial defensive feature, self-sealing tanks. When punctured by bullets or shell fragments, these tanks would automatically seal around the holes, preventing fuel leaks that could cause catastrophic fires. This innovation, combined with carbon dioxide fire suppression systems, significantly improved crew survivability. Perhaps most importantly, the Wright Cyclones were remarkably reliable. Unlike liquid-cooled engines that could be disabled by a single coolant line hit, these air-cooled radials could continue operating even with significant battle damage, bringing countless crews home safely. When America entered World War II after Pearl Harbor, the B-17 was ready for action. The Army Air Forces had learned from early British bombing experiences that daylight precision bombing was the way to go, and the Flying Fortress was perfectly suited for this dangerous mission. The strategy was bold and controversial. While the British Royal Air Force bombed German cities at night to avoid heavy losses, American commanders believed they could achieve better results with daylight raids on specific military and industrial targets. The B-17's reputation as a flying fortress came from two distinct armament systems, its offensive punch and its defensive bite. Let's start with what made it a bomber, the offensive armament designed to deliver destruction to enemy targets with surgical precision. The heart of the B-17's offensive capability was its spacious bomb bay, capable of carrying up to 8,000 pounds of ordnance on short-range missions, though typical combat loads were around 6,000 pounds for longer missions into Germany. The bay could accommodate various bomb types, 500-pound general-purpose bombs, 1,000-pound armor-piercing bombs, or even specialized incendiary clusters, designed to create firestorms in enemy cities. Accuracy came from the revolutionary Norden bombsite, a top-secret mechanical computer that calculated bombing solutions based on altitude, airspeed, and wind conditions. This device, costing more than a luxury car, allowed bombardiers to place bombs within a 100-foot circle from 25,000 feet, at least in theory. The Norden was so classified that bombardiers swore an oath to destroy it rather than let it fall into enemy hands. But the B-17's legendary status came from its defensive armament. The final B-17G variant bristled with 13 50 caliber M2 Browning machine guns, creating interlocking fields of fire that could engage enemy fighters from virtually any angle. This wasn't just firepower. It was a carefully engineered defensive system. The defensive arsenal included a Bendix chin turret with two guns, a Sperry ball turret underneath with two more, a top turret behind the cockpit with two guns, and a tail turret with two additional weapons. Waste gunners manned flexible guns on each side of the fuselage, while the radio operator controlled a single gun firing upward through the radio room hatch. Each 50 caliber M2 Browning could fire 750 rounds per minute, launching 700 grain bullets at 2,800 feet per second. These weren't just machine guns. They were aircraft destroyers capable of penetrating enemy fighter armor and causing catastrophic damage. The B-17 typically carried 6,380 rounds of ammunition, giving gunners sustained firepower during lengthy fighter attacks. The psychological effect was as important as the physical damage. German pilots learned to respect the B-17's defensive firepower, often breaking off attacks rather than pressing home their advantage. This defensive reputation was earned through countless air battles over Europe, where flying fortress gunners claimed thousands of enemy aircraft destroyed. What made the B-17 truly legendary wasn't just its ability to deliver bombs, it was its incredible capacity to absorb damage and keep flying. The aircraft's design philosophy centered around bringing crews home alive, even when everything went wrong. Boeing engineers had designed the plane with multiple redundant systems. If one engine failed, three others could carry the load. If hydraulic systems were shot out, 
manual backups existed. If the electrical system failed, the plane could still fly on backup power. Self-sealing fuel tanks that would automatically close small holes when punctured. Additionally, the tanks were filled with carbon dioxide gas to reduce fire risk. These innovations saved countless lives when aircraft were hit by enemy fire. Stories of B-17 survival became the stuff of legend. Aircraft returned to base with wings held on by cables, with huge sections of fuselage blown away, and with crew members performing incredible acts of heroism to save their fellow airmen. The B-17's combat record is filled with missions that defined the course of World War II. The Schweinfurt-Regensburg mission of August 17, 1943, stands as one of the most costly yet strategically important operations of the war. The target was Germany's ball-bearing production facilities, a crucial component in all military machinery. The mission was a disaster in terms of losses. Of the 376 B-17s that took off that morning, 60 were shot down and 95 were damaged beyond repair. That's a 41% loss rate in a single day. But the strategic impact was enormous. German ball-bearing production was crippled for months, significantly hampering their war machine. Then, there's the story of the Memphis Bell, perhaps the most famous B-17 of all time. Piloted by Robert Morgan, this aircraft became the first B-17 to complete 25 combat missions with its original crew intact. The achievement was so significant that Hollywood made a documentary about it in 1944 and later a feature film in 1990. But for every famous story, there were thousands of unknown heroes. Take the case of Staff Sergeant Maynard Smith, who earned the Medal of Honor during a mission over France. When his B-17 was hit by enemy fire and caught fire, Smith fought the flames while manning his machine gun position. He threw burning ammunition out of the aircraft and continued fighting until the plane reached safety. The B-17's combat effectiveness resulted from continuous evolution based on hard-won battlefield experience. Each major variant incorporated lessons learned from previous models, creating an aircraft that improved throughout the war. The robust design ensured that many B-17s continued serving well into the 1950s in roles ranging from air-sea rescue to weather reconnaissance, proving the enduring value of Boeing's engineering achievement. The B-17 also pioneered formation flying techniques that maximized defensive firepower. The combat box formation allowed multiple aircraft to support each other with overlapping fields of fire. When German fighters approached, they faced not just one aircraft's guns, but dozens of machine guns firing in coordinated patterns. Communication technology was equally advanced. The B-17 featured multiple radio systems that allowed coordination between aircraft, navigation updates, and emergency communications. The intercom system let crew members communicate despite the deafening noise of four engines and wind rushing through gun ports. Perhaps most importantly, the B-17 featured some of the war's most advanced survival equipment. Heated flight suits kept crews warm at extreme altitudes. Oxygen systems allowed operations above 20,000 feet. Parachutes, life rafts, and emergency supplies gave crews a fighting chance if they had to bail out over enemy territory. As World War II progressed, the B-17 gradually gave way to newer, more advanced aircraft. The B-24 Liberator could carry more bombs and had greater range. The B-29 Super Fortress offered pressurized cabins and even heavier payloads. But none of these aircraft captured the public imagination quite like the Flying Fortress. Production of the B-17 ended in 1945, with a total of 12,731 aircraft built. Most were scrapped after the war but a few survived as museum pieces and flying memorials. Today, fewer than 50 B-17s remain in flying condition worldwide, making them incredibly rare and precious links to history.
the B-17's combat record speaks for itself. Over 640,000 tons of bombs dropped on enemy targets. Countless strategic objectives destroyed. And ultimately, a significant contribution to Allied victory. But perhaps more importantly, the Flying Fortress proved that American industry could produce weapons that were not just effective, but also protective of the brave men who used them. The Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress was more than just a bomber. It was a symbol of American ingenuity, courage, and determination. Its ability to bring crews home alive, even under the most extreme circumstances, made it beloved by the men who flew it and respected by the enemies who faced it. The lessons learned from the B-17 program extended far beyond military aviation. The emphasis on crew safety, redundant systems, and robust design influenced everything from commercial airliners to spacecraft. From its Wright Cyclone engines to its 13 machine guns, every component was designed with a single purpose, to deliver Allied air crews safely to their targets and bring them home again. The B-17's technical achievements influenced bomber design for generations, establishing principles of defensive armament and structural integrity that continue to this day. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Flying Fortress, make sure to subscribe for more.